previously on ETFW. In our last episode, Brendan and I set out to a local forest in the early hours of the morning in search of truth behind a well-known urban legend. There we attempted to contact the spirit of the infamous Candyman in hopes of discovering if this urban legend is simply that, or if it is real. Should you wish to view that episode, there will be a card at the top of the screen which will take you to it. In this episode, Brendan and I meet up for a mid-lockdown mini-exploration at a local national park near us. Whilst there, we make our way to a destination called Tabagai Gap, and begin our search for the remnants of the infamous Conell Cliff Dwellers. This is ETFW. Follow us as we explore the Colonel Cliff Dwellers. Back to the channel everybody, my name's Ricky, this is Benman, together we're ETFW and today we're going for a little local adventure. As you guys probably know, Sydney is in lockdown at the moment. We've been locked inside for what, three weeks now? It feels like three years. And it's going to be going on for another two to three weeks at least, probably into early August, which for filming, it actually sucks. We haven't been able to film anything, haven't been able to go anywhere and we found this little local spot just near us in a little area called Kernel. We filmed here once before doing a haunted video back at the location where Captain Cook actually first landed. If you guys want to watch that video, there'll be a little card in the top corner of the screen which will take you to it. But there's actually another location here that we're going to go film today. I came across it from our Crater Crow video where someone actually commented on Facebook saying that there's actually more of these little cliffside huts dotted around Sydney. So had a look, figured there was one near us we go check it out today with that said we're gonna get into it we got a bit of a hike as you guys can see behind us they actually close the Cape Salander lookout where we're actually meant to park so we've got about a three kilometer hike with that said let's get into it we'll pick it back up in a moment hope you guys enjoy the video peace The Colonel Cliff Dwellers, or otherwise known as the Tabagai Gap Dwellers, were a group of childhood friends. Bert, Gordon and Sid gravitated to each other from an early age. The boys shared a number of interests, one of those being fishing. The three mates found themselves roaming the cliff sides of Colonel in search of a perfect place for them to fish and enjoy each other's company. As it would soon be, they soon found that spot Bert, Gordon and Sid found themselves frequenting the cliffside of Tabagai Gap and eventually became their local secret. Tabagai Gap provided the friends with perfect natural shelves dug into the cliffside. They eventually began camping overnight and after some time, without a word spoken to each other, they knew that this was their paradise. 
Over the years, as the friends grew from boys to men, they began adding additions to the natural shelving. Passageways and tunnels were dug through the rock. Water came from a natural spring. They used kerosene lights and fridges, and eventually, after many years, constructed an intricate network of huts which hung off the cliff at Tabagai Gap. Bert, Gordon and Sid, however, were not the only lucky ones in Sydney to have shared the same thoughts. Throughout the 1920s, many took to secluded locations in search of refuge and to escape the troubles and hardships the Great Depression brought on. Small villages such as Tabagai Gap could be found all along various coastlines throughout Sydney. However, the construction of these villages was against the law, and ultimately, the government made an effort to evict and demolish many of the villages over the years. Bert, Gordon and Sid, however, were one of the lucky ones. The three friends had approached the council in hopes of permission to build and permanently occupy their man-made huts at Tabagai Gap. With what I'm sure was a convincing speech, the three mates were given permission, but at a cost, they were to agree and pay council rates which they did without hesitation. All was well for Bert, Gordon and Sid. They lived in peace at Tabagai Gap all the way up to the 1960s. They introduced many more additions over the years to their huts, adding bridges, painting the cliff walls, and even erecting a guest house for friends of theirs to stay. However, their peace and quiet was coming to an end. Eventually, in 1961, the Lands Department reviewed the permissive occupancy agreements and ordered the cliff dwellers and permanent reserve campers to leave. Two of the three mates grudgingly complied. However, Bo refused. During his protest, a group of vandals set fire to a stolen car and pushed it over the edge of the cliff so that it would hit the roof of the huts. Its exploding petrol tank demolished much of the structures built in a raging fire. Heartbroken, Bert watched on as 40 years of memories burned away before his eyes. He reluctantly left and lived out his remaining days in inner Sydney. Today, nothing more than a few remnants remain. If it wasn't for a small notice board near the location, you would have never known that the huts existed. What a spot, guys. You can imagine kind of, you know, all these little huts built around here back in the day. You can imagine how peaceful it would have been living here. Kind of a little bit similar to Crider Grove, but unfortunately the huts that were once built here aren't here anymore, as you guys heard in the history. But, I mean, I gotta give it to these fishermen back in the day. They picked an app, they all picked Absolutely beautiful spots to build. It's better view from my, a better view than what I get at my house. And you got to think back then, like they were paying council rates here. They were paying rates to the council. I don't know how much it would have been, but you could imagine. <laughs> Whatever it would have been, it would have been you know, Like so here's good. 20 cents, you know what I mean? <laughs> but man, like imagine having your own little slice of paradise on the side of this cliff with no one to bother you here. It just would have been absolutely peaceful. It's literally, you know what it is? It's the view that Iron Man would have from his house. Oh, exactly. Because he lives on the cliff. Would have been crazy. So we're basically sitting right above where the huts were actually built. We're going to try to go down. There's a little spot just over here. Just over here where Brendan actually like almost fell down. I thought he died. Almost, I did fall down. <laughs> granted, <laughs> granted, it was only half a meter, thank God, but I my knee. <laughs> yeah, I actually thought Brendan dropped and died. Like I was literally setting up the camera. I heard this like, and then I looked and Brendan just goes, <laughs> just dipped off. But we're gonna pretty much climb down. We're gonna make our way under. Climb down, make our way under. Over to where they have the little pool school just over here. And we'll take you guys along for the ride. Alrighty, let's climb down. Let's do it. Let's do it. So the weather took a bit of a turn since we last updated you guys. You can see, you can 
actually see the rain. That is torrential. Yeah. Option A, we go into the cliff huts, we wait out the storm, make a fire, we huddle naked, we keep what? warm. Option two, we make the two and a half kilometer hike back to the car. Oh, Hopefully we make four. it before the rain hits us and we survive in the air conditioned blissful ranger. We're not gonna make it back to the car. We won't make it back into the car. I, I say we huddle. I reckon like option I take, A. I take the naked option. All right guys, we're gonna go huddle naked. We'll pick it back up in a moment. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, there is two stairs. Yeah. No, here, here, it's proper stairs. Like, that's like wind stairs. These are actual carved stairs. Check it out. Oh, that's sick. Dude, that's so cool. Take the bag, we find out. It's a race against Mother Nature right now. Yeah. Now it's raining. Just our luck. We have this little cave here to help keep us shelter from the storm. I'll go big spoon. All right, survival time. Let's get the shit. You go off. little spoon. No, we got it. We got it. Okay, this is survival 101. This is ETFW survival 101. When you're caught in a situation like this, it's important. All right, food, water, yep. warmth. Warmth first. Let's get our clothes off. It's the we only we way. can burn the clothes as well. That's right. For extra warmth, but not our beards. This is as real as it gets, guys. We'll pick it back up in a bit. I'm all alone. I got no one beside me. I'm all alone. I got no one beside me. But you gotta have friends. And I don't remember the words. But we are camping under a rock. And about to get naked to survive this shitty weather. I hope nobody comes. And sees my bare bum. It's going on ETFW. I might as well put it on Pornhub. So we switched over to the GoPro just because of this rain. We're gonna make the climb. You guys can see we scaled down pretty deep. Yeah, it's gotta be careful. Talking earlier is uh, hoping you'll be able to see it. 
in the time lapse, but we saw a big ass whale. Like this. Yeah, a big ass whale. Would have been a humpback. Um, breach, full body out. It was uh, pretty cool. I've seen it before, but not from land. Only in the ocean I've seen it. And that's the ocean. I think I was on a boat when I saw it, so. Only in Australia will you get all four of the seasons in one day. That's true. In about 10 minutes it's gonna snow. literally where we were hiding <laughs> so that's to show you how quick how quick we scrambled we that's the walking track yeah but we were all the way over there but that yeah that's where we originally were today we got to about here it started raining we scrambled all the way down this through all that scrub into that cave because yeah. we were aiming to get there but you can't get there. there's this cliff it's, face from up here like it, that was actually a bit of a climb. Dude, we would have looked like the biggest idiot. If someone came past, they would just feel like, what the f this guy's doing? So good though. Oh, it was heaps good. It's so good. We kept dry, didn't get wet. <laughs> I'm so happy with that. And then the whales put on a show for us. Alrighty guys, with that said, we are gonna call the episode. As you guys see, the sun's pretty much cleared up now. Basically gonna make our way back. Like as we're about to leave, the sun pretty much completely cleared out all the storm clouds rolled over the ocean so i figured we'd do some last minute b-roll last minute photos i'm going to show you guys in a second the cave that we actually took shelter in <laughs> again this is a pretty short episode kind of i guess you could say not as much visuals but you know this this location is a little bit more about the history i guess you'd say you know even though all the huts are gone it's you know a little bit sort of showing you what was here and I guess you could even say like, a, you know, nature kind of reclaims everything in a way. We can mold it, build it, shape it, do whatever we want to it. But at the end of the day, when we're gone, everything kind of turns back to nature. Yeah, that and show off our backyard too as well. This is literally in our area. Yeah, like, it's, it's like 10 fun. minutes from our place. Yeah, it's, it's pretty so crazy. crazy. Anyways, guys, I'm going to show you the cliff quickly. <laughs> if you did like this video again, be sure to go down, drop it a like, drop it a comment. And if you are new here, hit the big red button that looks like this. Join the channel, join ETFW. Hopefully we can get another video out before I go up to Brisbane. If not, I'll be seeing all you guys in a couple of weeks once I get settled in up in Brisbane. Once I get kind of, you know, my feet on the ground up there and get some locations under my belt. Anyways, with that said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>